Hey guys, my name is Gloria and welcome back to my channel. Uh, apologies for the light. It's almost sunset here, so everything's a bit weird and the light's shining directly in my eyes, so we'll have to deal with that. This is Monday's video. Hopefully this shall be going up on, on a Monday. And uh, for Mondays, I like to recommend a small book chipper that I have recently found and liked. So today's book chipper that I would like to recommend is Space Jockey. And Space Jockey is a self-confessed nerd and horror freak. Two things I can definitely get behind. Whose videos are informative and chock full of recommendations. I particularly like her thriller recommendation video because there were plenty of books on there that I'd never even heard of and because I really want to read some more thriller this year. So you can check out Space Jockey's YouTube channel, her YouTube channel, and like and subscribe to her if you like what you see because I certainly do. Today I want to do a June wrap up. Uh, I was looking for my videos and I don't think I did one for me. I can't remember doing one for me, anywho. Um, I won't be going through every single book that I read. Here comes the sun again. Isn't that super? I won't be going through every single book because I did go through a lot of them in my Goodreads challenge analysis because I finished my entire Goodreads challenge uh, before I even got to the middle of June, which is the middle of the year. So uh, I went through at least half of them there, but I did, I think I read 19 books in June, um, so I was still on my reading fever then, it's it slowed down a little bit now, uh, but still, still not stopping. For the most part, it was a really good month. I read some literary fiction, I read some non-fiction, I read novels, novellas, a couple of short story collections, I read men and women, black and white, I read um, quite a few. It was, however, Pride Month and I sort of completely forgot about that. I planned on doing um, a Pride Month special but it just, it was a stressful month uh, just globally I think. Um, a lot was going on, there were a lot of protests for a lot of different things um, and it just, it was quite heavy and I didn't I think it was also because I didn't go to Pride. I normally go to the parade in Dublin and it obviously wasn't happening because of the lockdown and everything and it just, it all went over my head. But uh, I have been reading, um, I'm always re I'm always reading queer, uh, queer writers and queer stories. Um, if you have any recommendations for me that you read during Pride Month, please let me know. I will absolutely read them. Uh, I did see a lot of recommendations though um, from other people reading queer writers and black writers as well so I got a lot of recommendations in the month of June that I'll I'll be reading in the next uh, couple of months and beyond that so I look forward to those ones. I think my favourite for the month of June was Burnt Offerings uh, which I did a comparison video um, of it and the group of it which is a new literary horror. Um, Burnt Offerings is quite a classic commercial horror and it has quite a few similarities to The Shining and it came out just before The Shining and I really liked it. It just it felt uh, like a very comfortable familiar horror and I definitely recommend that. Ah, I didn't read <laughs> I didn't read 19 in June, I read 12 in June and it was 19 in May so it is slowing down a bit. Um, I don't think I'll be reading as much for July because this is the month where I try and focus on my own writing which is going Super, it's going super. As usual, I read a lot more ebooks than I did physical books. I've realized that one of the reasons this happens is because when I can't sleep, which is always, um, it's I'm very conscious of noise and I don't want to bother my boyfriend or wake him up. So instead of picking up a physical book and turning on the torch on my phone, which is noisy and annoying, um, I've started to just open up uh, the Kindle app on my phone and read ebooks instead. So I'm currently reading quite a queer book actually. It's a trans fantasy story written by a trans woman and it's set in South Asian sort of fantasy culture. Um, so it's really good. It's, I'm really enjoying it so far and that's what I've been reading during my insomnia for the past few days. And that one is called Stealing Thunder. But yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy with what I read, what I read in June. Um, I'm hoping to diversify my reading for the next 
60 years or so, you know what I mean? But um, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with the books that I read. Uh, it was just a weird month outside of booktube and outside of everything and it was just a bit of a stressful, stressful time coming out of lockdown and trying to get back to working semi-normally and just, I think for a lot of people it was a crazy time and it still is a crazy time and there's still a lot of protests going on and stuff so don't forget that that is still happening. But hopefully for me, uh, July will be a little bit more structured with my reading and my writing and hopefully uh, I get my own book done so that someone else can read it someday and have it in their June wrap up video. That's weird. So of the literary fiction that I read, I read a short story collection by an Irish writer called Nicole Flattery and that was Show Them A Good Time. Uh, I did read this as a physical but I just posted it off to my friend so that he can read it. It was quite good but again, you can see from my comparison of Burnt Offerings and the Grip of It, um, some of the same things came up um, in terms of my issues with literary writing. They're, they're very well written stories, she's a very good writer, but just the, the genre in general. Um, some of those things came up in this as well, but it, it was so good, I've heard her reading from it um, as well, and she's quite good at performing. Of the short story collections, there was Phantoms, edited by Marie O'Regan. Uh, I do have the physical copy of this, and it is terribly put together. And none of the pages match up. They are the wonkiest pages ever. Um, it's in the other room. I just couldn't be bothered getting up to get it. But uh, it had quite a few people. So it had Josh Malaman, Paul Tremblay, Joe Hill, and it also had Catriona Ward, who was at the uh, the Welsh Brandon retreat that I went to. So some great stories in that one. I really like. Dark Divinations, which was a horror anthology edited by Natching, Natching T. Casa. I am. Um, ruining that name but uh, it was, I really liked that collection, it was based on a whole lot of Victorian era stories and everything it was about telling the future and divining the future, um, that one was really fun and as you can see the cover is electric to say the least. Uh, I also read a picture of Growing Grey by Oscar Wilde so that counts as queer um, and it was exactly what I expected of Oscar Wilde. I'm not sure if that's the first Oscar Wilde I've read. You just see a lot of books everywhere in Dublin about him, but um, it was good, I enjoyed it. Like I said before, Burnt Offerings and the Grip of It. Um, you can watch my comparison of those two here. Uh, Don't Touch My Hair by Emma DeBerry, which is a non-fiction book about the history of Afro-Caribbean hair, um, the struggles of growing up. Uh, she grew up in Dublin uh, with Afro-Caribbean hair and there's just nowhere in Dublin that you could go at the time in the 90s at least um, to get your hair styled or taken care of at all and she just talks about her own experience growing up with uh, hair that is stereotypically undesirable uh, in our society at the minute so that was really interesting really informative our reviews coming of that one uh, for my review blog, I read After the Fall, Children of the Nephilim uh, by Paul Freeman, who's a Dublin writer. That one was really good. Uh, it was a sort of post-apocalyptic uh, novel where instead of a virus or anything, um, well, I suppose it is kind of a virus, uh, the world's taken over by, by vampires. By vampires. And uh, it tells the story of this small settlement that have to fight off the vampires at night and they have a leader who used to be a preacher but uh, has lost his faith since faith since the world went shit so you know relatable another short story collection actually that i read was a literary fiction short story collection and it's called the hostel life by milatu uche okore uh this is these are stories that she wrote while she was in direct provision in Ireland as an asylum seeker and they're really good. They they show the the issues with direct provision in Ireland and why we need to get rid of it and uh, a review of that one is coming as well. I also read Bad Parts by Brandon McNulty which was a supernatural thriller horror uh, about a guitarist who 
damages her hand and needs a replacement hand as soon as possible for her gigs big break uh, show and she remembers that back in her hometown there is a creek demon that will replace body parts for you the only catch being that you can't leave town uh, and if you do your body part disappears or you die so she has to go back and try and convince this creek demon to give her a new hand in order to play her gig and um, you can't bargain with demons I think is the uh, the moral takeaway from that one. Last but not least was a non-fiction horror called Sequel Land, a story of dreams and screams by J. Slayton Jocelyn and this was a non-fiction book that was sent to me to review and it is about sequels in horror movies and he did a lot of interviews with different directors who directed sequels for the likes of Saw, The Leprechaun, Halloween movies, uh, video game movie sequels as well. Uh, it was just interesting to see what it was like going into something that already had an established franchise or something where you're expected to make a lot of money off the movie but not get a huge budget and he also talks about his own struggles with his own writing because he's a, a horror writer himself and struggles to sort of find a place uh, for himself in the writing community or in his writing career at least so that one was very interesting I am looking for more um, non-fiction to read in the future as well as thrillers so that was quite good um, so the 12 books I read in June I think I think I'm quite happy with them. I did um, pick a lot of the books myself so it wasn't just people asking me to review them which is a goal of mine for the future and uh, I think it was a pretty good month. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the, the subscribers and the views and the likes that I've been getting. Uh, if you do like what I'm doing you can like and subscribe. You can like and subscribe down below. I have a lot of book reviews coming, book recommendation videos and also the journey to my 90,000 words uh, for Camp Nanorimo in July and um, that number will change, I promise you that. So thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next video.